Okay, folks, we are back. <laughs> it's a little bit late, actually. I got home way later than I thought that I would. So, I just wanted to do a different kind of video. I don't want to, like, just drench you guys in a whole bunch of tier list videos. So, today what we're going to do is a video request from Tim From it 172 So, Tim From it says, something I'd be interested in is how to build a Summoner Duels team from scratch. Okay. So, Summoner Duels... A mode that a lot of people are afraid of for some reason. I don't even know why. Like, it's not scary. It's not a difficult mode to get into. It does take a little bit of practice. You gotta, like, just learn the maps and learn what works and what doesn't. And you gotta have some openings, at least some opening ideas. You need to go, you don't need to go, like, super hardcore on the openings, but you can if you want to. So it can be as chill as you want it to be, or it can be as, like, heavy as you want it to be. It's all up to you. It's all down to preference. But I would say you should at least give it a try. If you're on the fence, if you're worried about losing or whatever, I mean, just throw those thoughts out the window. Just play for fun. I mean, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. You're not going to win all of them. Even the best players lose eventually. So just experiment. Just have fun with it. And eventually, like, the more you play, the practice will make perfect. So... That's what I would recommend. So here's how you would get your feet wet to start things off. If you're interested in playing Summoner Duels, we're going to go over like some team ideas, some basic team setups, also some popular team setups that are being ran right now by people. And we're also going to just take a look at some maps here. We're going to start with the maps. So whenever Summoner Duels is in rotation, the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and take a look at the maps, see which maps are in play. Also, take a look at the captain seals, see which captain seals are in play, and choose accordingly. The captain seal will be pretty obvious which one you want to go for based on whatever team setup you have, but we'll get a little more into that in time. So, first and foremost, we're starting with the maps, and this is currently the map that we have in rotation, so I thought we might as well start with this one. So, this map, as you take a look at this, you'll notice it's very biased towards flyers. Cavalry is going to have a really rough time here. We got these two breakable walls there, and then the complete the, the middle is completely impassable by calves. Even Caden Lindy is not helping you out here. These tree tiles, these palm trees are completely impassable by calves unless you smite them through. And then we have these walls as well, these unbreakable walls. So really, if you're running a cav on this map, they would have to go completely around from like this point. They would have to go all the way up here and then this way if they're trying to get to the enemy team. So why not just run a bunch of flyers, have like Guidance 4, Soaring Guidance, or Ash as well. Ash is free to play, and she also provides the jump. There's also Ascended Florina, and also the Summer Tana with her refine with Fruit of Edun. So d there's more options than just Guidance 4 if you don't actually have Guidance 4. So it's not like you're completely out of luck if you didn't summon for the specific fodder skills that you're looking for. So there, there's always ways you just got to pay attention to what skills are available and which skills work the way that they need to. Okay, so th also you want to take a look at the setup down here. This is where your units are going to start when the map begins. The positioning is going to be right here. So as far as openings are concerned, you want to have like just a general idea prior to starting a fight, like where you want your units positioned and how you want that to be. How you want to get your opening turn started so i would ideally say on the first turn it's usually just get your units into the box as many as you can so that you can possibly get more units into the box than the opponents and score a quick plus two on the scoreboard and how you would also want to try to zone the enemies out is just put a lot of a lot of units that have a lot of reach in here so for example if you can get ash for example on this spot and then you've got a bunch of nuking units close by they would be able to jump as far as over here and then they would have reach that extends throughout all of the enemy space so controlling territory is very important on that first turn and there's many ways you can go about doing that. There's also Duo Dagger, who can just give the whole team Pathfinder, which would also be another way you can just extend your reach all the way up to enemy territory right from the start. So, think of all these things are things you want to consider. Like, how do you want to control space? How do you want to box the enemies out? How do you want to get as many units as you can into the box yourself? Those are things you want to be thinking about for your opening. Okay, here is a more wide open map. This one is more favorable to calves. Whenever you see wide open middle sections like this where the calves are easily able to abuse their reach, 
and also cancel themselves to safety. These are the type of maps where cavalry type units are able to dominate. Again, try to think of your openings, how you want to set up and get your units into the box, zone the enemies out in the process, and etc, etc. Alright, here's another map similar to the previous one we looked at. It's an, another desert map, but this one's got trench tiles and it's a little bit more accessible to cavs. If you've got Caden Lindy to provide the trench tile negation for your cavalry units, then they would be able to be quite effective on this map as well. So pay attention to things like that. Those are the things you want to watch out for. But again, like flyers just dominate every map. I don't think there's a single map in summoner duels period that is unfavorable towards flyers so if you just want like a quick tip there for what sort of setups you can run on any map then anything that involves flyers should be able to work pretty well everywhere here's another calf map there's a little choke point this was actually the map that was in rotation the last season where i did my summoner duels run so if you're interested in seeing more action out of this map you can take a look at that video but basically, there's a choke point here in the middle where these tree tiles are inaccessible by cav-type units. So they would have to attack from over here or over here, and vice versa over here or over here for enemy lines. So you can sort of try to create a wall here, have like Kanto control somewhere, have save units somewhere in there as well. So you can like prevent calves from just accessing all the way through and you you put a unit here to block space and you can make a little choke point so there's also things like that to consider like how can you hinder the enemy's movement by like placing units in specific tiles and then having other units set up nearby to give support all right this is another map here where looks pretty favorable to flyers and calves can get away if they can move through the trenches like with Caden Lindy then calves should be effective here all right here's another map Th this one can be effective to calves if you can break all of these tiles but I found that flyers with or ash in particular any unit that allows your other units to jump in can work really well on this map in particular so you would break this breakable wall here put your ash right there and then your units can jump two spaces ahead so flyers would be able to move onto these little lake tiles there and then if the enemies are foolish enough to break their tile you can jump over there so a lot of warping shenanigans warping is very powerful on these maps and counterplay would be to run gatekeepers so on the current map that we've got like this one here like i said warping and flyers are going to be insanely effective here so you want to also be trying to counter that and bring like warp bubble so legendary mur and gatekeeper would be able to help you prevent enemies from just zoning you out completely with all of their warping all right we got another map here we're not going to take a look at every single map there's way more maps that we could be looking at but just to give you guys a general idea here's another caden lindy map so calves could work out pretty well here also just flyers in general so you want to make sure you want to be aware of this so like let's say for example you're trying to use a dagger pathfinder line and the unit you want to pathfinder in with happens to be a cavalry type unit you want to make sure the map is going to be favorable to that sort of play style and that sort of team so all things you need to consider and just be quickly aware of it doesn't take very long it's it's not like this is rocket science or anything so don't feel intimidated I mean, look at this. How basic is this? Just break these walls and then your calves can run free or just run a bunch of flyers with warping and <laughs> you can dominate the map that way too. So it's not hard. It's not like it's difficult to figure this stuff out. You don't have to feel intimidated by summoner duels at all. Okay, so with that out of the way, we took a look at a bunch of maps there and now we're just going to take a look at some teams. I have some example teams brought up here and we have a couple of team archetypes that people like to run. So what I've been seeing a lot here is the final boss setup. This team would exemplify that. The idea with the final boss setup is to run one unit, one sort of omni tank. There's a lot of units that can fill that role. Today we'll be taking a look at Lucia and just support them with a ton of support units so you can make sure that they're going to take out all of the enemies at once. So if you're a, a character or a player that likes to run your favorite character and just dominate the fights with your favorites, this would probably be the type of team you want to go for. <laughs> Just pick your best invested unit, your plus 10 God Sword or Omni Tank, like Brave Dimitris at plus 10, etc., etc. Just juice them up with all the support that you can and then have them win the fight for you on their own. 
So Lucy is obvious. Her weapon turns off everything. <laughs> like, all of the bullshit effects are just not going to work on her. Gambit 4 is very devastating on her too because she turns off specials. So if the enemies can't use Special Spiral 4, which is the premier way to just turn off DR, it becomes very difficult to deal with this Lucia. Now, of course, like every unit, she's got weaknesses. Legendary Shez, for example, would be the primary one. Shez has got color advantage, and then if you give her null, physical null follow-up, she can just brave attack Lucia twice, and in those two hits, she's turning off DR, she's got effective damage, and color advantage. So that would be a counterplay to Lucia there. But there are plenty of units you can go for for this god role, like the, the unit who's going to be getting all the support. Ellie would, of course, he just gives bonus doubler and a bunch of stats, as well as null panic and also canto one. So all very good stuff for Lucia. We have Mur on this team too. She's a dragon, so she can fill the role for Ellie Wood to gain Vision of Arcadia. You need a dragon on your team to do that. And then she's also giving Warp Bubble, so we can stop enemies from just jumping in and trying to like, like get triangle attack effects and etc. We've got a dancer on the team as well, this Azura here. We meet the tactic skill requirements, so the idea is just have Res Tactic on Azura. That's the only stat that you're not gaining from Eliwood's Vision of Arcadia. He gives attack, defense, and speed up 6. So you would want Lucia to jump in with Azura's Soaring Guidance or Guidance 4. Have her jump two spaces ahead. She's going to be getting Res Tactic at the start of the turn. So she's going to be at all stats of 6 with bonus doubler. And then just have her take care of business from there. So I would try my very best. You don't want to just throw these units in haphazardly. Like, you can if you want to. I've got Smite for an example on Eliwood, so you can just push farther ahead into enemy territory. But that's not always ideal. You don't want to just blindly throw units in there. Make sure your unit doesn't really have anything to worry about before you do that. Otherwise, try to keep them close by so you're gaining more support and more effects. And then we also have Duo Mark here. He can turn off pre-charge specials with his Duo skill. He can inflict Stall. He can inflict Isolation. He just does so many things. And he's got Canto Control as well. So a debuffer here, allowing us to weaken the enemies so that Lucia is going to look even better in combat. And we've got Canto Control in case something goes wrong. You could give this guy Special Spiral 4 if you want him to <laughs> just be like a backup plan unit and just try to deal with the fight if, if something goes wrong and Lucia dies I would say it's a good idea to always have a backup plan on any of these teams that are running the one omni tank unit that's getting all the support so at least you still have some way to fight back even if that unit dies so there we go we took a look at that sort of team <laughs> then we have the dagger pathfinder line an oldie but still a goodie so the idea with this one is to just pop her duo skill and then you get pathfinder on everybody so you would want to abuse the Pathfinder to send one unit with really long range all the way up into enemy lines, have them snipe something, and then Kanto all the way back. For whatever reason, Kanto interacts with Pathfinder. So if you have a unit that has Kanto and they attack the enemies, they can Kanto through your allies with Pathfinder and just extend the amount of range that they can Kanto back. So this is very powerful, obviously. So for example, we'd be using the... Ira unit here, the tea time Ira. She has the farthest canto with distant canto. And then she can also get plus one movement from her duo skill. You wouldn't be able to do that on the same turn as popping Pathfinder though, so you gotta be careful about that. Because you can only use one harmonic or duo skill per turn, but that's fine. So we would have her move in and attack and then canto all the way back. To make sure that Ira can get through damage reduction, we have Alir on the team as well. You would get ally support with them, and then all of a sudden Ira is busting through DR. She's got flow desperation to hit twice in a row, and she's just clapping with Supreme Astra twice in a row. That nullifies DR, and then she cancels back all the way. So, very devastating combo there. We also have this Dorothea here, Harmonic Dorothea, to give us... Warping with Soaring Guidance, and then her duo skill can provide a second action to Ira in case of a pinch. And then finally, we've got Gatekeeper for the Canto Control and also the Warp Bubble effect. He also gives some nice support to Ira in combat with a Drive, Attack, and Speed Up 5. So this is just one example of how you can play the Dagger line with Pathfinder. There's so many other units you can go for, so many other strategies. So just choose what's according to your box, what you've got access to, and how you may want to run it. Alright, next up we have, of course, the Hinoka line, probably my favorite team. 
So the Hinoka line just abuses flyers with charge so you can hit and run, of course, with Hinoka's Rally and Cry C skill. That is very easy to do. She just dominates like everything. This unit's so dumb. So for this team, we've got, of course, Legendary Azura here. She's getting dance on these units so they can move again if need be. And also you're getting plus one movement afterwards and all stats up seven. So a nice buff unit here. And then also you can do a whole bunch of shenanigans there. Soaring Guidance. I mean, you can give it to any of these units, but I've got it on Thor here in particular. You could give it to Azura if you wanted. So the idea with Thor is that you can also pop her duo skill to negate enemies from doing <laughs> whatever they may be trying to do. So if... For example, Dagger were to pop her Pathfinder duo skill, you could just negate that by popping Thor's duo skill and just removing Pathfinder from all the enemies. So this is a nice counterplay option. She can do a lot with that duo skill, just rendering a lot of strategies useless. And then she herself, being a flying type unit, is able to look really nice with Hinoka. She can pre-charge her own Blazing Special when you have the minus one from every turn with her weapon. And she's also doing stall on the enemies and exposure, so your units hit that much harder. We got T. Lysithia. She's just the craziest nuke pretty much for magic that we have right now. She also debuffs the enemies with her weapon, where she's doing a sabotage type of debuff with the menace type of effect. So enemies within five spaces of her, and then they're going to chain that to enemies within two spaces of them. And then this Lysithia can attack really hard. She hits like a caveman. You can Kanto back with her. It's just a very strong combo when you're getting the charge support with Hinoka there. And then finally, we got Gulveg here to take as many actions as possible in a turn. She's really nice with Hinoka support. She can run in and attack and then get the Gale Force and then attack again. She does gravity herself after activating the Gale Force effect, but that's completely irrelevant because... <laughs> with path with um not pathfinder with charge you can still move three spaces even being gravitated so gulveg is really nice very nice addition to this team and even though she can't break through dr without having a unit like alir to give her the ally support that's perfectly fine we're getting exposure and we're also getting the sabotage effect from lysithia to debuff the enemies so you're you're going to be very consistently breaking through whatever they got with gulveg regardless of anything so I wouldn't worry too much about that. All right, next up we have this type of team. This is an Embla hit and run style of team. I had a lot of fun running this last season in Summoner Duels. So Embla is able to inflict severance on the enemies so she can turn off save skills and then allow your Kanto units with range to attack and then easily get out of the way. So if the enemies can't use save skills, then you're free to just bully the crap out of them with your offensive threats. We have Brave Selif here and also Thief Nina. They are going to be our attackers of choice. And what the idea here is, we got Blazing Wind on Selif so he can pop whatever he hits. Hit and run to maximize the Kanto and get out of the way. And then we can easily get to lethality with Nina with the combination of Duo Asker and his Duo skill and also Open Domain. And then of course repositioning with Krom to get extra minus one cooldown. And we can also use Krom and Asker as possible nukers with Special Spiral 4. So it's just a complete balls-to-the-walls offense team, and it works pretty well because you can turn off save skills. So very nice stuff there. And then the final team, this one's more like experimental. This is just like a, a brainchild team that I came up with myself, but I would consider this in the style of a balanced type of team. Now, these teams are very tough to build, and you, you kind of need to be keeping up with the meta a little bit. You got to have, like, meta-level units with some pretty nice skill fodder to be able to pull something like this off. Because the idea here is that you're just trying to counter the common play styles and threats that enemies are going to be using. So just predict what they're going to do, and then have counter play ready for all of that stuff. There's a lot of different ways you can build a team like this, but the example that I came up with was, was this. So we have Brave Robin here. We're going to use him as a near save unit because we have Corin, And then, conveniently enough, Brave Robin and Duo Ymir have the same base defense. So it's easy for them to just be the targets of our assigned decoy here. So we can get Robin as a near saver. And then we can have Ymir as a far saver. Now, Robin's got built-in tempo. And also, he's got nullification of enemy DR. And he has adaptive damage. So we're running Bonfire here. The idea is that the enemies hit him once. 
And then on ne his next hit, it's just a bonfire to the face with tip the scales. He's going to nullify their DR and possibly just break through them and get rid of them right there on the spot. And then with this duo Ymir, for the ranged threats, they tend to be relying on fire sweep type of things like legendary Hinoka and legendary Veronica. Also, Hardy Bearing is pretty clutch there, so you can nullify instant desperation effects too. So, Tea Time Lysithia would only be able to hit you once, for example, with Hardy Bearing there. So, you turn off Fire Sweep, you turn off Desperation. You're guaranteed to live around a combat no matter what with Ever Living Domain. They can't just one shot you right through anything here. And then your next attack would be a Flare to the face because you take the one hit from the enemies that brings Flare down to a two hit cooldown. She's got minus one special trigger on her weapon, so we're at one hit cooldown. And then we, we have also the support from Tip the Scales there to get Rally Spectrum, so we're guaranteed to get Flare off. It's going to recover our HP, so we can just keep using Ever Living Domain, and we're pretty much good to go. If the enemies try to use, like, Embla, for example, you can just pop the duo skill with Ymir to get rid of Severance and get rid of all the nonsense, so you're still able to use your safe skills. And then finally, to wrap us up, we've got Katria here for the Soaring Guidance to jump in and warp our units. Also gets the Triangle attack. And then we've got Duo Mark here to turn off enemies' pre-charged specials, which would be the one counter to Ymir and also Robin here. Pre-charged specials would just break through DR, so we can just say no to all of that with this guy's duo skill. He's also debuffing, and we got Kanto Control to keep us safe from enemy Kanto. So th this would be an idea of a balanced type of team, but as I said, there's many ways to play something like this, and... The, the sky's the limit. It just comes down to what your box is capable of and what you feel like running. So that's pretty much an introductory guide here to how you can get started pretty quickly for summoner duels if you're interested. I would say definitely just go for it. It's not something you need to give too much thought to and it, it's just fun like to play something like this. I mean it's very easy to run teams like this like Hinoka if you've got her. You could just run a full flyer ball, and it's not difficult at all. As I said, many of the maps are biased towards flyers, so it's not like this is high investment whatsoever. A lot of these things are just running base kit for the most part. So, I mean, there you guys go. There's also teams like this, so just whatever your box has access to is what you should try to go for. So, that's going to wrap us up for this video, guys. Hope this gave you a little more incentive to want to try summoner duels at the very least i know a lot of people don't like it but there's really no reason not to i mean just try you get no points for not trying right but at least if you try you get the little old college effort there so this is your boy tacho signing out hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will catch you guys again on the flip side